I am a gamer. That is, I'm someone who enjoys playing video games. And I'm also a professional. In my professional role, I help individuals and leaders be more successful in their jobs. You're probably wondering what those two things have to do with each other. For the longest time, I did too. It seemed like they couldn't be further apart. But what if I told you that video games contain the keys to success in the professional world? What if I told you those who play video games are routinely practicing those habits that can lead the next generation of leaders into the businesses of tomorrow? I believe they do. I want to take you back to 2014, February. I sat down at my dining room table, and I began looking at my own life. I began questioning what skills and abilities I had. I took an inventory, and I started with my resume. I looked at work experience, I looked at certifications and education, but I didn't want to miss the whole picture. So I stepped back, and I took a look, and I realized that there was another hobby that I had had, something I had been doing for 30 years. I was playing video games. It's an awful lot of time. And it was really hard for me to connect these two at first because there's a certain stereotype around video games. They're often considered a waste of time, something that children do, but certainly not a professional adult. And in the worst case, they're seen as inspiration for horrible acts of violence. To label them as such is to discredit an incredible medium. I think part of the problem here is that the stereotypes go beyond the games themselves and actually have been applied to those who play games. I want to introduce to you a few individuals who enjoy video games. First up, I want to introduce to you Mike. Mike is 35. He lives at home with his parents. He hasn't yet figured out what he wants to do with his life, but he sure enjoys playing video games. But Mike's not the only person who enjoys playing video games. I also want you to meet Simon, Simon Sinek. Two-time best-selling author, he has a TED Talk that has over 20 million views. He's inspired countless individuals to explore their own why and find their own purpose. I also want you to meet Butch, or as his patients know him, Dr. James Rosser. Dr. Rosser is also known as the Nintendo Surgeon. Reason for this? Well, it might have something to do with his research and training programs where he helps physicians be better surgeons with video games. And next, what about Jane? Jane McGonigal, New York Times best-selling author. In fact, in her work, she compares life and video games and says when you look at the two, reality is the one that appears broken. She believes that games include ideas that can help solve some of our largest problems, some of our largest issues. Those are just a few examples, but what about the numbers? The 2014 research that included an interesting statistic in this survey of essential facts of the computer and video games industry, it was revealed that 48% of gamers were female. Even more interesting is that females over the age of 18 represented a larger percent of the entire population than males 18 and under. Let that sink in for a minute. So what does this mean? Well, in part, it means that games aren't going away. It also means our ideas of what we think about those who play video games needs to change. So I have three main ideas for you tonight to think about in ways that we can look to video games to empower our next generation of leaders. The first point for you to think about is ideas and principles can transcend the media in which they appear. When I talk about principles, I'm referring to concepts and ideas that can exist regardless of context or country or generation. These ideas can be learned in a variety of different forms. We learn them watching plays or reading books or, yes, even playing video games. One of the most famous examples and sources of this might be Aesop's Fables. Aesop's fables use examples and stories that are filled with animals, like a lion and a mouse, or a tortoise and a hare. Now, at the end of each of these stories, we begin to realize these stories are not about animals, but about us as people, as humans, of how we interact with each other and how we interact with ourselves. Now, Aesop makes it really easy for us. He gives us a moral of the story at the end. So when we get to the end of the tortoise and the hare, we learn, yes, slow and steady wins the race. 
But what if the moral was missing? Would it still be possible to learn lessons from these examples? That brings me to my next idea. We can learn without realizing it. In fact, children do it all the time. It's called play. As adults, we do it too, but unfortunately, we don't always pay attention to the lessons we are learning. So if we can learn principles from games, what might they look like, and how might they compare to the skills we really do need in the professional world? The following is a list of skills that are required for success in today's modern workplace. Traits like persistence and grit, having a growth mindset, being adaptable, being able to handle change and navigate that successfully, collaboration, and being able not only to learn, but to share our knowledge. It's an impressive list, it's daunting, and it's a challenge to develop these skills. Well, let's take a look at a list of skills that we have to routinely practice while playing video games. That list looks like persistence, grit, having a growth mindset, being adaptable, navigating change, being able to collaborate, and, well, being able to share knowledge. That's not a mistake. The list is the same. Now, some of you are probably wondering, if this list is so similar, why don't we see these skills appearing more in the workplace? That's a very good question. An even better question might be, how do we draw them out? The answer to this lies in the nature of games themselves. Games inspire us to take on amazing challenges, but they also give us a safe environment where we can practice, we can try out ideas, we can fail and recover from it. In fact, because of that environment, we're inspired to take on amazing challenges, insurmountable odds where they're routinely stacked against us and remain successful. So what is it about games that we have to learn? Well, the answer, I believe, is hope. Hope is the element that games offer us. The hope that if I'm facing a challenge, I can win. The hope that if I encounter a locked door, somewhere there's a key. And not only is there a key, I can find that key and unlock the door and find out what's inside. Hope is an element that all too often is missing in our day jobs. It's missing in the routines that we face. So, how do we harness this hope? How do we, as those who play games, be more successful? Well, it comes back to principles. One principle is personal accountability. So for those of us who enjoy playing games, we need to ask ourselves the question, how can I use what I've learned while playing a game and apply it to the real world? This challenge that I face, if this was in a video game, what might I do to win? And leaders can help here too. If you're a leader of a team, or you have individuals that enjoy playing games that you work with, you can ask questions and draw these ideas out. You can say, if this was a game, what sort of resources might you need to win? You can also help create an environment that is safer, that gives more opportunity to learn from mistakes rather than be punished from them. Ultimately, the true potential for unlocking video games' skills and talents and abilities lies on us to look at not the workplace as a game, but what we can bring to the workplace as game players. <laughs>